I'm Ross, and tonight we are having a groundbreaking show. This is the first ever live broadcast from a church in Long Beach, and we are broadcasting live from the Christian Light Baptist Church here in Long Beach, and uh, we are thrilled. We have a great show planned tonight, and we have a very, very special guest to open up the show. If you saw the front page of the Long Beach Herald, it says, Farewell to a Hero. And uh, we lost a true hero, Billy Quick, passed away, beloved fireman in town. And he was beloved by a lot of people, but not too many people knew him as well as his very, very close friend, Assistant Chief Rich Corbett. So let's have a round of applause for Rich Corbett. And Rich, first of all, welcome to, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Howard. And I'm going to start you off with um, three questions. Number one about uh, Bill. How much did he love being a firefighter? Number two, how much did he love life? And number three, how much was he loved and respected by his other firefighters? So I'll hit you with three tough questions That's off the bat. No problem. All right, Howie, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, taking time to honor my friend and a uh, true hero, Billy Quick. Uh, the question that you asked, uh, how much did he love being a firefighter? Uh, Billy loved being a firefighter. Uh, in his earlier years, it was everything to him. Uh, being a firefighter was all he ever wanted to do. But it became his second most beloved thing once he uh, had his twins, uh, Ryan, Mary, and William Henry II. Uh, they were everything to him. But firefighting was a very close second. A very close second. And your other questions again, uh, I'm sorry. How much was he loved and respected by his fellow firefighters? You loved Billy and you hated Billy. It was a love-hate relationship. Uh, his son said during a eulogy, he uh, was a person in distresses, dream come true. He was the chief's nightmare. And I can attest to that. Uh, the guys in the firehouse loved Billy because he always wanted them to be the best, no matter what it was. Uh, he always was drilling with you, always training with you, always wanted to make sure you knew how the tools worked, different ways to use the tools. Uh, he wanted you to know where everything was on the truck. Because in firefighting, seconds means lives. And if he needed something or somebody needed something, he didn't want hesitation. He wanted you right there to take care of it. That's great. And, you know, in the article, the beautiful article by the Long Beach Herald, they mentioned that he was a larger-than-life figure. That means he really made an impact in life, didn't he? Yeah. I said in the article, once you met Billy, you were overwhelmed. He was extremely large in a fit way. Uh, he was larger than life. Uh, he was boisterous. He was loud. He was in your face. Uh, but I always said, that type of guy, by the end of the night, you felt like you knew him for years. And you were at dinner at his house probably that night after you met him. That's the type of guy Billy was. And uh, you said about his uh, love for life. Uh, Billy did have an extremely active life outside the firehouse. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, Billy climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount McKinley. Uh, he was very proud of those feats. Uh, he also took a lot of us, like I'm a Long Beach person, and a lot of Long Beach people, you know, once we go over the bridge, we're lost. Uh, and people know what I'm talking about. Billy took us camping. He showed us so many different things outside of our comfort zone. And uh, he lived for the spice of life. Uh, the best way I can describe it, to this, if it wasn't for Billy, I would never put the spices on my food. Every time I put my uh, crushed red peppers on my, my uh, pasta or my pizza, I think of Billy. I mean, that's the type of guy he was. All right. Let's try to keep the next one clean. But we'll do. You were in his wedding party. He was in my wedding party. You know, he was in your wedding party. Very close friend. If you had to remember one, maybe two stories that really stick in your mind, maybe a funny story or a great story you want to share with everyone listening, what would that be, a great Bill Quick story from his good friend, Assistant Chief Corbett? All right, he did this uh, once when he was in Africa, and he did it at my wedding. It's hard to believe that he actually did this. But Billy was, uh, he was a very hairy-bodied person. Uh, and he would, uh, in Africa, he did this as well after he climbed the mountain. But at my wedding, he stripped down to his boxer shorts, mm -hmm. and he came out on his knees and crawling with his hands like a gorilla. And he was extremely hairy, and he just made the gorilla sounds, and he had a banana, and it, it was priceless. People didn't know what to do. 
And I was told when he did this in Africa, the kids first ran away screaming, but they came back and laughed at him. So that's, that's the best story about Billy by the Wedding. Uh, do you remember the day his twins were born? I do. Let's talk about that, because, you know, having one child is, is an incredible thing. But I, I can imagine having twins, he must have been on cloud nine. Let's talk about that. I remember when he first told me that they were having twins. Uh, Billy didn't get nervous about a lot of things. Uh, Billy uh, was in many fires, involved in many rescues. When he first found out he was having twins, he was a little nervous. He was, he was a little nervous, but as time went on, he got more and more used to it. And I remember the first day the twins were born, I was actually at the hospital, and he was there posing for a picture that somebody, I don't know who was taking it, but he was holding these two beautiful babies in his arms, and it was a smile like you'd never see before. I mean, he was just the proudest, proudest papa at the time. So that, that's the memory I have of him when the twins were first born. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, if you had to say the legacy that Billy Quick's going to leave behind, how would you describe the legacy that you think he'll, that when people remember Billy Quick, they remember him about? Billy was a giver. Uh, one thing uh, people, I'd say almost everybody up and down the East Coast knows about is the Lieutenant Williams Volleyball Tournament. Uh, Lieutenant Williams was a, uh, a boss that he worked with in New York City that uh, passed away in the line of duty at a fire. And Billy couldn't let it go. Billy always thought any brother that passed away in the line of duty had to be remembered. Billy started this Lieutenant Williams Volleyball Tournament. And no matter where you go, you go around the world, somebody's going to be wearing a Lieutenant Williams volleyball tank top. And this was started to help originally Lieutenant Williams' family with the kids through college. And it just blew up beyond imagination. There used to be a little tournament down in the west end of Long Beach. We had to move it to the middle of town. And uh, that's what he's going to, his legacy, I think. And he wasn't a frontline guy during this tournament. Billy was the guy that was working at the grill cooking hamburgers and hot dogs for all the people that were participating. Uh, he wasn't out there with banging his chest saying, I did all this, I did all that. He was in the background. He would be the guy running to wall bounds if we ran out of buns and, and things like that. And when it was all said and done with all the extra t-shirts, he was out there giving them, he went up to the Long Beach Hospital, gave them to all the nurses. He went to all the other firehouses and gave them to all the other firefighters. That's the type of guy I want everybody to remember Billy as, the giver that he was. That's great. And uh, Chief Corbett, with a few minutes we have left, is that uh, let's talk about the Long Beach Fire Department because it's a unique fire department. Uh, Long Beach is a, is a unique town all to itself. What makes the, the Long Beach Fire, sets it apart from other fire departments throughout Long Island? Well, first I want to say we are the uh, best trained firefighters in all of Nassau County. Uh, what's unique about Long Beach is we have a combination paid and volunteer department. We have five to six firefighters on duty every single day. They man an ambulance and an engine. Uh, in Long Beach, the average wait time for an ambulance is three to four minutes. In Nassau County, the average time is eight to nine minutes. So we have that going for us. Uh, we have three stations, uh, one in the East End, one in the West End, and one at headquarters. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We have the best breathing apparatus out there. We have the best firefighting suppression equipment, and we have the best ladders out there that were made. Uh, all our equipment is relatively new, and the city is always looking to upgrade our equipment. So that's the best I can say about our department. I want to thank you for an elo eloquent uh, tribute to Bill Quick, and I don't know, we, when we had uh, 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 Anthony Fallon and uh, Antonio on, uh, we talked about what we're looking forward to is we're gonna, we want to do a live remote broadcast from the firehouse. What do you think about that idea? And, uh, in educating some of the people in Long Beach about all the great things that you guys do at the, at the fire station. Our doors are always open. We love for the com uh, community to come to the firehouse, see what we're all about. Come down, we'll show everybody what's going on, the tools that we carry, uh, the equipment that we use, the size of the fire trucks. Uh, anytime somebody from the community wants to come down, feel free. You know, especially on Sundays, we have uh, regular drills on Sundays during the winter from 10 to 12, and in the summertime, it's Wednesday nights from seven to nine. Uh, Howie, one more thing before I uh, give the uh, phone back to you. Uh, there's been a college fund set up for Billy, Billy's kids, and uh, real quick, uh, if anybody would like to donate to this worthy cause, uh, it's a college savings plan.
for Ryan and Mary, Ryan, Mary, and William Quick II. You can send it to Amy Bermudez, Vice President at J.P. Morgan Securities at 277 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10172. If uh, anybody doesn't get that, you can call the Long Beach Fire Department at 516-431-2434. Ask for myself, and I will get that information. And uh, that's all I can say. Thank you, Howie. Everyone, let's give it up for yeah. Assistant Chief Corbett. Yeah. And he's the reason why the Long Beach Fire Department is the best in all of Long Island, without a doubt. And uh, we, uh, and we're going to take a break now. But uh, everyone, how's those? We, by the way, we want to thank Just Wing It, uh, who donated for this uh, great special occasion, uh, wings for this occasion. Again, everybody, how do you love the wings? Yeah. All right, so everyone out in Long Beach. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and that means get your wings at Just Wing It. They were voted the best wings in Long Island, and they're enjoying them here at the church. They're awesome, and uh, we're going to have more fun coming up. We loved hearing from Chief Corbett, and after the break, we have a special young man, two special young men from uh, Long Beach High School. We have Eddie Digital. We have a lot of fun, and the pastor will be here. We're going to hear from the male chorus. And we're going to hear from the Young People's Choir. All right, we're going we're gonna to take a break. Folks, support our sponsors, Pecnic and Schaefer, our new sponsor, All Creatures, right there in Long Beach, and Grooming Tails. We love the animals. And Joe Sonoda Group. All right, we're taking a break. Coming to you live from the Christian Light Baptist Church, first ever broadcast in Long Beach. I am Halftime Howie. This is... Broadcasting on the beach with Halftime Howie on Long Island's first and oldest radio station, WGN. 